a guy named uh, Robert Dreyfus, who went to see Baba in 1965. He was just young, 25. And he went and met Baba at Marizad. <clears throat> and, and I won't go into that, but when he came back passing through New York, the Monday night group, the old group of Baba lovers from New York, grabbed him and asked him to share his experience of being with Baba. So they, he was just 25 and they're all older people who had met Baba. So they sat him up in front of the room and they said, well, okay, what was it like to meet Baba? He said, I went from here to here. And that was the end of his talk. He didn't, he wouldn't, they couldn't get anything more out of him. But that journey from the head to the heart is a long journey. Now there Baba, through his grace, brought him down to that level. He did that also with Nashua Nalavala when he was sitting up, leaning against Baba's chair at one of the darshans and Baba moved him from being kind of an inspired intellect down in permanently into his heart. It's a particular phenomenon. Um, now how to, <clears throat> how to stay in the heart I, what I found for myself is I had to be willing to experience a tremendous amount of emotional suffering and pain in order to stay there. Also joy, joy is in the heart. All the wonderful feelings we like are in the heart, but also there's the hurts, the pains, the wounds and everything. <clears throat> uh, and to have to stay with that. <clears throat> you kind of basically plant your flag at the level of the heart. So the heart is your level of operations. And it takes, it takes returning again and again to the heart. Whenever you find yourself up in the head, go down and follow your feelings. Now the feelings are in the present. The head is a realm of, of time and space the past, present, and future, at the level of the heart, when you're following your feelings, a certain anxiety that's passing through you, a resentment, or a hurt and everything, <clears throat> you, are in the, you are in the present moment. You know what I need to do? Oh, I, I need to get a gallery view here because I'm, I'm, I'm not seeing who's here. Oh, there are a few people around here. Oh, <laughs> I had one little person. Oh, hey, Amrita, you're back. I saw you some time back. Let's see. Hi, Jeff. Jay Baba. Hey, Jay Baba. Nice to see you again. Yes, Let's see. Thank you. I should put my glasses on here. I, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Darn it. Uh, <clears throat> Now, this isn't the Almighty that used to um, live up in Mahabaleshwar. Maybe not. Dinku is there. Okay, I see that. I don't see, I only see a few of you people. Let me get my glasses so I can see a little more clearly. <clears throat> There's Dinku, I see her, yeah. So we're talking about how to get to the heart and remain in the heart. And I should say that the heart is not the final destination. You have to go from the heart to the soul. So it's only a way station. Some people think that's the, the destination. Oh, hey, Artie! Is that, oh, hey, fantastic. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> so, uh, I mean, this is a very, very, I can't say complicated subject, but it's very hard. There's so many ways to get from the head into the heart. And, and the, 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 the method that I, <clears throat> I got from the Mondale and everything was just one. 
it's more of a conscious journey from the head to the heart to the soul. It's a journey in consciousness. It's not that the mind goes on this journey or it's not that the heart goes on to on this journey. It's the consciousness. <clears throat> the Baba brings your consciousness from the head down into the heart level and then from the heart level eventually to the soul. But hey, do you folks have any questions? Because <clears throat> it is a very vast subject. Um, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> I mean, can you with your consciousness right now with your awareness, feel what you're feeling? Go down into your heart area. See, we're very fortunate. Baba has worked it out <clears throat> so that our heart interfaces with us uh, on the body. So we, uh, like the brain is, is up here <clears throat> and the, the, the mind kind of uses the brain as its vehicle. <clears throat> and the heart <clears throat> is there <clears throat> and it's a vehicle for love. It's also a vehicle for the ego. Keep that in mind. <clears throat> the ego kind of can use the heart as well. So the heart is not just an unmixed uh, unmixed uh, bag. <clears throat> <clears throat> so um, <clears throat> anyway, ask some questions because this is a vast subject. <clears throat> Anybody has any questions? Now, well, well, do for a moment, go down and feel what you're feeling in your heart. Now, can you think, can you think at the same time as you're following your feelings? No, cannot. Or do you have to go up? Huh? Have to go or up. Do you, have to, you have to go up. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> See, so when that's you, when you, you in can... your heart, you <clears throat> cannot think. Yeah. <clears throat> and if you're troubled by thoughts, horribly troubled with thoughts, go down and see how you're feeling and stay with your feelings and, and then your thoughts <clears throat> will be out of your awareness. And you might even be able to fall asleep, you know, if you follow your feelings. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> wow, what can I say? Um, <clears throat> Um, ask a question. I mean, this is not, <laughs> um, <clears throat> you send everybody to the heart so they don't have any questions. Okay. Now. I have a question. Yeah. <laughs> no, I have yeah. a question. Yeah. Uh, when you say that you are, uh, when you're working, uh, from the heart, you know, sometimes I get to at Facebook. Or, uh, well, by missing, uh, <clears throat> you're, you're, uh, you're breaking up. Are you breaking up? Uh, so I think there would be a, oh, okay. Uh, now, now can you hear me? Yeah, now I can hear you. Yeah. You can hear me, okay. Yeah. So I was wondering whether at uh, at your workplace, you know, whether it would be uh, the correct thing to use your heart, or uh, there are there are situations and times where I think you need to go and dip into the mind. <clears throat> there are times where uh, the heart just totally takes over, but uh, maybe uh, some kind of a balance between the two. Yeah. Uh, is what uh, yeah. would work or uh, do you segregate it? Okay, this is the job of the mind or this is just the job of... <clears throat> yeah, very good question. Does that work? <clears throat> Baba says is that the heart sets the goal and the mind helps to carry it out. <clears throat> In other words, you feel like you, you want to celebrate a relative's birthday. You feel that in your heart and then your mind helps you to carry it out. <clears throat> get all of the food, get to contact the people and everything. So the mind is great servant <clears throat> of the heart, but it shouldn't be the master of the heart. <clears throat> In most people, the mind is the master of the heart because all the values and opinions and beliefs and everything are up in the head. 
And most people are ru ruled by their beliefs, their values, their right and wrong, good and bad and, and everything. <clears throat> and so they may not come down and consult the heart. The heart may have something different to feel. But the heart, the mind should be a vehicle uh, for the heart. However, what you say, so, there are some bad emotions, negative emotions, and there are the higher emotions. So that the distinction at the heart level is important. You know, resentment, fear, and everything. A, a lot of the negative qualities in the heart. And then there are things like generosity and helpfulness and compassion, empathy. That's the higher side of the heart. <clears throat> So that distinction is important to make because you can't just live right from your heart because you may be uh, living out some resentment, you know, and, and your mind will certainly help you carry out your resentment, believe me. <laughs> but you wanna, the higher emotions, the higher feelings reflect love. The lower emotions reflect the ego the me i me and mine i mean i'm just now this is one way this is only one way of going into this there are many paths into the heart uh, some people just come into this life and they're already in their heart they don't even know how they got there you know anyway are you following it, it, it this is odd but uh, are you following what i'm saying or So yes, Arthur did a, I, yes, what's that? Yeah, can I come in with a question? Let him Hello, finish. what? Let him finish. Let him finish. No, okay. I'm not, I, no, go ahead. Ask uh, any question. It's more helpful to me. Yeah, uh, like you said that uh, there are. Someone's asking, so. Rakesh, go ahead. Okay, so yeah. like you just said that uh, there are higher emotions and lower emotions and those are the places when the lower emotions are uh, manifesting, then the mind needs to come in and take control of the situation and prevent uh, any things of that sort. Is that what you meant? <clears throat> no, if, if say resentment comes <clears throat> into you, I mean, of course your mind can help, but if resentment comes into your heart, to retaliate with somebody or you know you want to see if you can move over into a more generous part of your heart the loving side of your heart uh, rather than using your mind to stop that if you can shift over to the loving side of the higher uh, feelings sure and sure i agree i agree then it won't be a matter of willpower it will be a matter of just moving into a softer, more gentle, compassionate side of the heart. Naturally. Yeah, that, that, to me, I mean, I'm just saying, the, the, I'm telling you these things, you all folks may have all different ways of doing this. I'm just describing RT, yeah. Yeah, so I want to know the next step from how to get from the heart to the soul. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the mind and heart can uh, do their okay. own tango, well, but it's the soul that matters. That's very good. What happens, what has to happen, this is what I got from Erich and Darwin Shaw, especially, that we have to empty out the heart so that we have, if you think of the heart as a warehouse, there's all sorts of stuff in there. I mean, files and boxes and boxes of, of our past, our conditioning, not just this life, but other lifetimes. There's the good stuff and there's even the, uh, the bad stuff, but there's even the good stuff. They are all taking up space. So we have to give that to Baba box by box <clears throat> uh, so that, <clears throat> and as we give box by box to Baba, and he takes every box and throws it into his ocean and it's gone. Believe me. But, there, but 
you got more file boxes that are in that same category. In other words, you give layer of layer to yourself. And in doing so, you make more room for Baba to live in you. So giving things to Baba, <clears throat> you know, you're, you're good, bad, and ugly of yourself to Baba. You are emptying out space so Baba can actually live in you. Ultimately, you become a shell and he becomes the one who does the living. That's ultimately. And, and, and when Baba is living your life, <clears throat> you know, and you're just a shell, you're just a vehicle, <clears throat> then, then you are in the soul. And the more you can spend in that realm, uh, <clears throat> the more beautiful the life is. But, <clears throat> um, I mean, there's so many, I mean, early on when I was quite young, <clears throat> I lived up near one of Baba's old disciples. His name was uh, Darwin Shaw. <clears throat> and one day he, uh, I don't know if this, this might be an, a different way of framing this. He looked at me and he said, Jeff, you are not the personality self. Now, in other words, you're not, you know, you're not Arti, you're not Meru, you're not uh, Rakesh. I mean, I, I, he said that to me and I said, well, I had no place to put it. You mean I'm not Jeff Wolverton? I thought the whole purpose was to get to know Jeff Wolverton as deeply as I could and go on in improving him until he reached the goal. And he's saying, I'm looking in the wrong place. And he used to say that the personality self, who we take ourselves to be, is just a storefront for the soul. In other words, we make such a big deal of the window displays and we change them with the seasons when we could go inside and enjoy the priceless merchandise inside. That's, so living from the, the from, if, if our personality is our base of operations, we're gonna eventually run into problems because we have to get detached from our little melodrama in order to move into that deeper drama within. <clears throat> But when Baba lives more and more of your life as you make more space for him by emptying out. Get, <clears throat> people say, oh, well, how do you give to Baba? <clears throat> well, where is he? He's, he's here watching us. He's watching each one of us. He enjoys our company. And occasionally we look up and enjoy his company. He, he loves and adores us. He created us. So how, if, if he has a problem with us, <laughs> He can't be God, but he has no problem with us. So <clears throat> he, he enjoys our companionship uh, through our, you know, our strengths and weaknesses, our good and bad. Uh, all of the things that we might even judge ourselves for, he doesn't. You know, he enjoys our company. I don't know how he does it because he does it for everybody. You know, I mean, how can he be there for everybody personally? But he is. So in giving to Baba... He is right there. I mean, you know, picture him right in front of you because it's not, it's not uh, some imagination. It's, it's using the imagination to assert what is actually true. In, in the end, we're going to find out he was right there in front of us all the time. So I, back then, I just started giving things to Baba. You know, the dread that I felt, the anxiety I felt, uh, the inadequacy, I gave that all to, to Baba. But it's just lay, one layer at a time. Don't think that, oh, uh, I, I need to see some results on this. Don't even think in terms of results, you know, uh, because uh, then you get caught up in, in yourself and, and is he helping me? He'll t anything you give to him, you don't have to say, some people say, oh, should I say Mayor Baba, Mayor Baba, Mayor Baba, or should I say Baba? But Baba knows, you can say, hey there. He knows if you're saying hey there to him, you don't have to get the spelling exactly right. He's right there. Uh oh, it says Hi. your internet, can you still hear me? <clears throat> yeah. So we can give these things to Baba and be free of it. 
it's the, it's the fastest way. I mean, you can get all caught up in spiritual experiences and everything, but the the way to to um, the shortest path is to turn directly to that pure presence of love itself. It's, you know, it's like you can bypass. The Mandali would say you can bypass the spiritual, the whole spiritual path and just turn, uh, get addicted to Baba's company. Get addicted to trying to reach out to him. Are, are you able to hear all these words or am I breaking up? No, no, we can hear you. We can hear you. Yeah. Um, let me see. Beautiful. What's yeah, that? We can. Just a few okay. words. Yeah. Just, uh, what you just get only hearing a few words? No, I can hear everything. Okay. I can hear everything. I, yeah, I can, can hear everything also. A, a, ask Next some more exit. questions because I can. May I ask a I, question? No. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so Denla, you uh, wanted to ask something? Yes, I wanted to ask. Um, sorry, yes, I don't really know, but there's a question I want to ask you. When you say surrender to Baba and, you know, how you give your anxiety or anything that you have, how do you not, uh, you know, hold on to it? I mean, how do you give it and completely kind of surrender? Because there are people who are, like, if you're working, in a corporate world or in, you know anything where there's a lot of stress how do you then say okay i can give this you know anxiety or this entire stress to baba and not take stress over it that something will go wrong and i'll you know <clears throat> well the thing is it's nice it's wonderful that we have these messes inside of ourselves because we have something to give to baba i take a look <clears throat> In other words, what if you were feeling just great? You may not be inclined to give how you're feeling to Baba. So all these uh, challenges are, are gifts that can be given to Baba. <clears throat> and, but here's one of the things I'll, I'll just mention is that, you know, Baba talks about love, love must love. We, we need to flow with love out to the world mm -hmm. and into Baba. <clears throat> But what happens, like you say at work, you have a negative reaction to somebody or you have a negative reaction to a situation at work. <clears throat> what, what Darwin would say in the Mandalay is don't let your, the flow of your love stop at your emotional reaction. It is possible to flow through your emotional reaction toward that person. In other words, we can walk and chew gum at the same time. But what people do is they, they have a reaction to somebody, someone whose beliefs violate their own, and so they stop. The consciousness stops there instead of continuing to flow. And so we diminish ourselves by that much. We think, oh, I have a right to dislike person and cut them out smaller and smaller. So, but now that flow of love is some, mostly it's wise not to express it outwardly. You, you can do that in an inner level. This person that you're having a negative reaction to, don't just stop with the reaction, but flow also as simultaneously as possible to flow through it. It doesn't necessarily mean the reaction is going to go away. Doesn't mean that you're not going to be aware of the negative reaction but it is possible to flow through it so that your world stays large instead of cramped down every time you come up against somebody who, who uh, pushes your buttons. Th does that make sense? Uh, can I come in, please? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, so, well done. thank you. Uh, so in short, you mean to say that if you have a negative reaction, you go from the mind, you're trying to get to the heart, so you don't suppress it. You sort of analyze it. No, don't. Uh, I wouldn't even say analyze it. Be aware of it and let your consciousness figure it out, not your mind. Let your intuition 
keep it in, in, in your consciousness long enough so that uh, your intuition can give you uh, a, a reading on it. Because the mind will come into the world of psychology and philosophy and right and wrong and good, good and bad, and it, it, it complicates the whole thing. And you don't necessarily have to figure it out. Why do I feel negative toward that person? If you stay with the negativity fully, you will, your intuition will give you some hints about how, you're cre how you are creating that negativity. Often you can see that you have a, a value or a standard and they are violating it. So what do you do? You have to kind of lower your standard lower your standards so that you can enjoy that person instead of reacting negatively to them. Does that make sense? Yes, thanks a lot. I've had, I've had to lower my standards, my expectations of people under the table. I mean, I, when I started, first started working at the center, I thought, Bob, this is the center of Merle Beach, I thought Baba would bring, draw the cream of the crop of humanity. <laughs> I found out after a few years, it was a cross section of humanity, from scoundrel to saint, from miser to philanthropist. The whole fam damnly was there, and so I had, in order to enjoy my fellow Baba lovers, I had to keep lowering my expectations, because otherwise I would be a critical and judgmental, and I would forfeit the chance of enjoying my fellow Baba people because people can't really do anything other than what they're doing up to that moment. You think, oh, no, they don't have to be that way. They have to be that way until they encounter a greater love. They, they have to kind of move in this, uh, what can I say, a, a, a circle, like an airplane, uh, until they encounter a wider, what's the term, uh, a wider, um, anyway, a wider consciousness. You think, oh, they don't have to be that way. They have to be that way until they encounter something larger than where they are. Then they have a chance to kind of move and change. And of course, uh, not only just the outer person, but then Baba. I mean, the more you spend with Baba, the wider your awareness and your, uh, the more expansive your heart becomes. And the more broad-minded you become. Anyone else? Palvi, Palvi has a question. Palvi? Yeah. Uh, Jay Baba, Jeff, this is Palvi. Yeah. yeah. So Jeff, I have, I have a question that, you know, um, I don't know about the others, but I start my day with Baba's name and uh, with very high expectations of myself and, and of the world that, you know, this is going to be a powerful day for me. I will not be selfish. I will not give in to my lower self. I will <laughs> love, you know, I will not be rude. And uh, by the mid afternoon, I've already, you know, committed all the, all the, everything. <laughs> and by late evening, you know, there is this huge sense of inadequacy that I feel. And, you know, this uh, feeling that, you know, I failed Baba and it's yeah. too heavy, you know, by, by evening there's a heavy cloud over my head. Yeah. So how do I deal with it? You know, that's very good. I mean, that, that's, uh, I'm glad you say that because see, we even have too high expectations of ourself. Mm -hmm. I mean, it took me a long time. I, uh, just like you, in my early years, I, I, I was into self-improvement, you know, a self spiritual self-improvement or improvement with Baba. But it took a long time to move towards self-acceptance, self-compassion, so that you're not, you don't beat yourself up when you're falling short of love, when you find yourself selfish because we are a mix of love and selfishness. You're not gonna be able to say, stay loving <laughs> throughout the day, believe me. And so you have to have compassion for yourself and you know, lighten up. I'm, I, I'm just talking about from my point of view, um, self-acceptance 
and, and acceptance of other people. Uh, I mean, uh, Erich used to say, spiritual progress is very, 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 very gradual. You know, it's not very gradual, it's four varies. So it, you, you're, I know like in our country, we want everything to happen. Uh, we want to get over our anger on a weekend seminar on anger management. It's not possible, yeah. you know. So don't, uh, Baba, and, and the thing is, you're not ever going to disappoint Baba. Baba is right there. He loves you no matter what. You know, he created you and he's, he enjoys your company. So don't, I, I mean, I'm saying don't worry if you, you fall short of your ideals, how you want to be for Baba. Yeah, yeah. thank you, Jeff. Thank you. You know, it's just, uh, I mean, I went through, I would say decades of that, okay. falling short. Okay. And then self-acceptance, you see, the thing about self-improvement is, is that you are there and where you want to be is in the future somewhere. Right. So you are, there's a, there's a, it puts a tension over the heart. And, and even when you get to that next place, they'll move the goalposts and you have to go to another place. There's no yeah. end to self-improvement. Mm -hmm. Now, when you so accept yourself, I don't mean to be complacent, but you're not going to have a problem with that with Bob, believe me. But when, the, when there's self-acceptance, the heart is able to relax. It takes away the tension. You're not trying to be something in the future. You are in the present. And that mm -hmm. relaxation, it relaxes mm -hmm. that tension so that love actually can percolate through your heart. Mm -hmm. So you actually become a better person than when you're trying to, uh, when you're caught up in self-improvement. Yeah. I mean, I, I remember um, Mara used to say uh, that she was <clears throat> afraid of heights. And when she went up on Seclusion Hill, I think most of you have been to Maribad, <clears throat> She, uh, she would have to crawl on the t up on, the, on her hands and knees at the very top. <clears throat> and I, I mean, I was young and I thought, well, she hasn't overcome fear, has she? But she did not have a problem with her fear of heights. You know, she accepted that in her as one of her limitations and went on. Didn't, didn't say, oh, well, I'm never going to be free and everything until I'm, uh, I, I overcome fear of heights. You follow? Yes, Jeff. Those yeah. both comforted me. Yeah. 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 I got to clean my screen here. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Dilshan. Dilshan? I think she's gone to the kitchen. Okay. Rakesh, you want to ask? Yeah, yeah I want to ask. Uh, just carrying on from these words, like Erich uh, said that the spiritual progress is very, 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 very gradual. Yeah. Uh, now, I just mentioned a few words that we've heard, a um, few lines. Like, uh, one, that the path is a wholehearted, constant remembrance. And then there is mastery in servitude. And like just now you said... Wholehearted uh, concentration, what? Wholehearted, constant remembrance of Baba. Okay, yeah. Okay. And uh, then there's also mastery in servitude. And let's say if uh, obedience, for instance, another one. So right now, I don't, I mean, the Baba in me doesn't talk to me, let's say. Let's put it, I'm not able to hear his orders or, you know, I'm not in constant communion or anything like that. So how do I carry out his obedience? Just follow the instructions given to me? Okay, very good question. Uh, these, are, these are the questions I asked the Mandali when I was young, you know. Um, you know, there's acting, uh, there's acting from principles to be generous, to be helpful, to be honest and everything. But those are still a little bit in the mind. And you know, you can be generous because uh, your mind says to be generous. But 
it's a different thing to feel generous and act from there. You follow? Yes. Uh, yes. You know, in other words, it's the real thing coming through. And then, you know, there's the, <clears throat> you know, you, you, you assert your willpower and you do something generous. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. That, that type of generosity are the training wheels until generosity can, 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 can take off on its own. So, um, now what I see, what was I going to say here? Um, <clears throat> oh, here it is. <clears throat> back in my college days, this is back in the 60s, I was, <clears throat> I was in great mental turmoil. I was like agonizing over what I was going to do with my life. I was very nostalgic about my childhood, which had been idyllic. I was regretful of a lot of the selfish things I did in my college days. The Vietnam War was go going on and I absolutely was not going to uh, join the army or anything. So in this mental turmoil that lasted for some years, Baba one day uh, flashed this to me. I think he was still on earth at the time. In every moment, there is something loving that can be done. In every moment, there's something loving that can be done. This moment. <clears throat> and, you know, with the implication, you know, Jeff, just look around. There's that, you know, child that wants someone to play with them, or you have a friend that's going through a hard time. You know, uh, you may want to work on the blocks that are impeding the flow of your love. There's always something of love that can be done. You're standing in line at a store and you're waiting in line. You can be saying Baba's name inwardly. In other words, that is obedience. That is surrender. We have the opportunity to love every moment. And if we just keep doing that, then you don't have to worry about whether you're obeying him or not, <clears throat> you know, or, or surrender and all of that. You are doing the very thing. He wants, a, there's a line from Jesus where he said, what would love do now? Ask yourself that question and I will be with you always in all ways. <clears throat> so you can look at Baba's discourses and how you should behave and his guidelines and everything. But if you can get to a moment where, uh, say, suppose, you know, what can I, what of love can I do now? <clears throat> Now, suppose I don't feel any uh, much feeling in my heart. Well, at least I can give that lack of love in my heart to Baba. That's a loving thing to do. Or uh, I, I can call my grandmother and say hello. In other words, it's very practical. It comes down to the present moment. Does that make sense? Yeah, all right. Thank you so much. No, well, uh, any... Uh, the one thing about following your feelings, let me mention, is when you're following your feelings, your emotions, you are in the present moment. And that is important to stay in the present. <clears throat> you, can't, <clears throat> you can't follow your uh, resentment in the future. It's now, it's, it's, you're feeling it at the heart level. So you are in the present. Once your mind gets in there, then you're thinking about how you're going to get out of resentment or why that person did that, it caused the resentment. Now you're in time. But if you're just following the, the resentment purely, you are in the present moment. And I, I once asked Marijuana Jessawala, that's Erich's brother. Baba used to say, see that young boy there? He's a saint. That he said that about marijuana. But I asked him, I, I said, I quoted Baba where Baba said, live more and more in the present, which is ever beautiful, and stretches away beyond the limits of the past and the future. In other words, you've probably heard that. And I said, what does that mean to you, Marwan? Marwan said, you will only find Baba in the present moment. You won't find him in the future or the past. <clears throat> he said, people spend so much time thinking about the past and the future and they let him slip away right in front of them. So 
even uh, it's better to be feel miserable in a presence i'm saying than feeling great up in your head i i that's what i i feel in other words because because there you're in the present moment and yeah. ba and that's very close to baba you're here's a here's something that takes a long time to discover but baba himself says it what you feel i feel baba says if you want to know how baba feels you want to focus on him focus on your deeper feelings because that is how baba feels to live in you you know what you want to know you, so people have baba up baba people have baba up here in the stratosphere somewhere he's god he doesn't feel the jealousy that i'm feeling no he is he feels the jealousy that you're feeling you think oh i'm just uh, i'm just indulging myself by thinking of my jealousy but you're also if you take it deep enough you'll discover that baba is right there feeling the jealousy along with you so it is a one way of focusing on baba directly it's one of the 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 high i mean i got this from eric it's one of the highest forms of meditation is to know how you're feeling at the deepest level because that's how baba feels when he lives in you if you're and and it, it, you don't have to always feel happy and joyous uh you know he'll he'll be he'll feel along with you so that you're never alone he's always there but we but these feelings we kind of just take well that's just me feeling jealousy how could baba who's the avatar feel jealous but that's our block you know so if, if you go deep down you want to know in this moment how baba feels to be to live in amrita or delna or arti you know that's go to how you feel that baba is feeling that right along with you it may take a long time to realize that that's in fact true <clears throat> but it is true so you're never he's never apart from you as long as you can contact your feelings you know you you have a direct link to baba you know Whew. my glasses are fogging up it's very humid here <laughs> in myrtle beach any other Irshan, are you in yeah, yes i i want yeah. to ask a question yeah is that okay yeah yeah definitely am i yeah we can hear you yeah we can't see you now but we can hear you hello yeah uh earlier uh, to the earlier question of delna you said that you know one even if when one is not have, having positive feelings towards a colleague or somebody around you let it flow through the consciousness uh could you please expand on that number one and second thing when you said that let your intuition give you the answer how yeah. does one decipher whether it is the intuition that is giving the answer or the mind that is giving the answer right good question thank you yeah i mean if you can stay with the feeling <clears throat> just without thinking about it bad bad thinking away like uh flies you know the thought wants to come in there and figure it out <clears throat> now if you can stay with it long enough you might get even a, a partial intuition which is better than uh some some uh pronouncement from the mind and the way to tell the difference between an intuition and an, a conclusion of the mind is that an intuition you'll feel lighter when you get an intuition and when it's a, a conclusion of the mind it, it it doesn't uplift you Uh, you have you don't feel like you really learned anything it, it, it's more of a narrowing down i mean turning the binoculars around the the wrong way and people get used to the world being very small <clears throat> from the from the heart seen from the heart it's like turning the binoculars around the other way and everything is up close 
and intimate. <clears throat> but when you're when you an intuition flashes, it always makes a larger. It gives you a larger. You well you eventually you get you 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 get to the point where you can make the distinction. They have a different vibration, an intuition from a conclusion of the mind. And that takes a long time to, to be able to, to uh, sense the distinction there. Uh, trial and error, you know, be, be aware. Like you think, oh, that was, I think that was an intuition. And if it turns out to be a conclusion of the mind, be aware that it didn't quite give you the experience you were hoping for. And that way you, you start to separate out conclusions of the mind from flashes of intuition. That makes sense? Yes, thank you. And the second yeah. question was about consciousness. Then you said how to, I mean, let it go. If you can expand on that, please. Yeah. <clears throat> um, You know, uh, uh, Einstein said, no problem can be uh, solved with the same consciousness that went into creating it. You can follow? So we have to get larger than our reactions. We have to go into, uh, we have to be able to look at it from outside from a larger point of view, rather than having our consciousness shrink to the, the, to the size of our reaction. You follow? So if you have a conflict with someone in the office, <clears throat> don't make your reaction the subject of your consciousness. Try, be aware of the, the negative reaction, but also try to see if you can think of that, that consciousness, consciousness as flowing through through that person with love, uh, even, if, even if it's hard to muster up much love, but even, <clears throat> even to let your awareness go through them while simultaneously being aware of your reaction, <clears throat> that can go a long way toward making your experience at the office a little bit more, you know, a little bit more, a, a little less confining. A little, uh, a little more expansive. But it's like learning the piano, you know, you start out with the scales and then you get your chords and then, you know, you learn to read music and everything. And eventually you can extemporize on the piano. So it's slow, slow process. Does that make sense? Dilshad? It does. Thank you so much. Though it sounds very difficult because one is angry with the person and having all the negative. Yeah. So. But have a sense of humor too. <laughs> I mean, we all, I mean, you're, you're, this is not your little problem. We all have that problem. Just know that there are a hell of a lot of other people out there who are dealing with people who are impossible. People who violate our values. Uh, our our standards are all the time. All, all the time, you, you, and in the world today, it, it <clears throat> could even be worse. So, I mean, the Baba people are having a very hard time uh, over here with the world because it is it is very much a violation of their most cherished values. Uh, but we have to get some detachment from our cherished values as far as expecting others to live according to our cherished values. Otherwise, we'll be miserable, perpetually. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, so I know I'm taking a little more time than the others, no. and they're there in the queue. Uh, the question, I mean, the, the, the struggle I have is that I feel very uh, disappointed so far as my personal values are concerned with the current dispensation, the political dispensation, and how the migrants and how the workers are being treated, uh, I mean, in the midst of this pandemic. So I feel very, very strongly about how the, you know, the government is not doing its role. And that makes me very miserable. I, I try to deal with it all the time. <laughs> we, we, got, we got a horrible situation over here too, believe me. 
we got an ex mafia boss as our president. Believe me, wow. it is it is not and 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 really corrupt. I mean. Basically, uh, if he if he was left for, to, in in America, yes. Um, yes, your voice and, is breaking. Oh, I'm just breaking. saying, is if we left this guy to our, uh, his own devices, he would totally dismantle democracy. And you have to live with these violations of your most cherished values, and not yes. make you, and not cause you not to be loving to sour you toward, toward this world. <clears throat> it deserves all of the love you can give <clears throat> and you need to flow out to this world in spite of being appalled by the behavior you see there. <clears throat> Baba said, world peace could be brought about if his lovers would cultivate thoughts of world peace. So we can, <clears throat> we can contribute a little bit toward changing the world by remaining positive. Baba says, I, you know, he receives our song at the local level, spiritualize, this is Baba saying, he receives our song at the local level, spiritualizes it, and broadcasts it to the world at large. So, so you're more of an activist, because of Baba, you're more of an activist than you might think because he's taking your life there in Pune or whatever <clears throat> and you're dedicating it to him he takes that life spiritualizes it and sends it out to the world it's one of the greatest vehicles of change because we are focusing and dedicating our life to Baba it gets universalized what we're doing our little piddling loving efforts <clears throat> are linked into the universal and it, and and the the whole world benefits whether and i mean that's what baba says whether we're aware of it or not so um even if you uh sense some uh, love toward modi it can actually it can, it, it is received by his soul it may not change him but it, it might temper how he behaves a little bit. Yeah. Anyone else? So Jeff, tell us one of your best sharing about Eric Uncle sharing with you. And then uh, with that, we'll end. Yeah. Otherwise, okay. almost one hour up and we'll go yeah. on for next two hours. Other yeah, no, okay. Okay. Yeah. You know, we do uh, okay. on and on. Yeah. Here, Jeff, here, one, here more thing, very... one more thing. Yeah. One more thing. Just to request. You remember the last time we barged into your whole uh, prayer session on a Friday morning? Uh, yeah. You yeah. were mentioning something one. about uh, coming from, uh, you know, moving from the head to the heart. How one yeah. moves from the head to the heart. That is very important. And then from the heart to the soul. If you Del can, you know. Delna, I think you came a little late. We finished with yeah. that. With that, okay, then I'll listen to the that, recording. That's what we've been kind of talking about. Yeah, I, yeah. I missed it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. If it, uh, yeah, that's okay, but uh, um, <clears throat> something is making some funny noises. Okay, I'll tell you, I'll tell you an important, I'll tell you an important, yeah, here's what I'll tell you an exchange I had with Eric. This is when I was young. It was in Mondeley Hall. There were a number of people around, maybe 20 or 30 people in uh, Mondeley Hall. And I said to Erich, Erich, what if I, I'm, you know, just, I'm young. I said, what if I went last night to a party? It was kind of a wild affair. I got drunk and I carried on. <clears throat> and I knew that Baba wouldn't be happy with me, but I did it anyway. <clears throat> now this morning, I'm hungover, I feel miserable, I've got a headache. <clears throat> and I, I, I said to Eric, I don't want to burden Baba with this. So I'm willing to suffer this <clears throat> because it was my own choice the night before. 
does Baba want me to give him my hangover? And Eric said, yes, give him your hangover. <clears throat> and the embarrassment of having such a meager gift to give your beloved will inspire you next time to have something more precious to offer him. But then I said, but Eric, still, isn't that a burden to Bob? <clears throat> and he said, brother, it is a greater burden to Bob to withhold anything from him than to throw on him the worst of yourself. That was emblazoned on my heart. It is a greater burden to Baba to withhold anything from him <clears throat> than to throw on him the worst of yourself. And so as a result, <clears throat> he's got all the good, bad, and ugly of myself over the years. <clears throat> but it creates a camaraderie. <clears throat> You know, Baba says, well, what do you have for me, Jeff, this morning? Well, I got that anxiety that I've been dealing with for the last three weeks. <clears throat> oh, really? That's all? Well, give it to me anyway. I mean, you'd like to bring him a bouquet of fresh roses, and all I got is some uh, same old junk to give him. But it creates a sense of humor and a camaraderie with Baba. <clears throat> and eventually, giving things to Baba you, the process is more fulfilling than the actual result. Suppose after years I was free of anxiety. That's not, the whole process of giving that, these things to him is the fun of it. And, and there's a sense of humor about it. It's not like, oh my God, I got something terrible to give. I dis disobeyed you, Baba. I give you that and the effects of it. <clears throat> he, he's like a loving mother. You know, uh, <clears throat> most compassionate and forgiving, and he's not put off really by our behavior. We're put off by our behavior. Our neighbors and our family may be put off by our behavior, but never Baba. You know, so like I say, I feel he loves and adores all of us, no matter what. He's not, <clears throat> he, 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 he doesn't really disapprove. Sometimes he looks like he disapproves because that's to, to keep you from doing something that's not in your best interests. Sometimes I'll look at a photograph with some, you know, some negative thoughts and the, the smiling photograph will suddenly frown at me, <laughs> you know, and it, Bob is telling me, Jeff, just don't go there with those thoughts, you know. So anyway, hey, I can't believe it. I'm I'm way over in India yeah. and Puna yeah. River. Uh, yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you, Jeff, so, for coming Thank in you on. and last. And I think, don't. I think Mehru had a so question. Much, Jeff. And goodbye. It was and goodbye, Jeff. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank yeah. you. It's Mehru Chandori yeah. from Hyderabad. Okay, it's Mehru Chandori from Hyderabad. Oh, good, Mehru Chan. Good. Yeah. Do you find a lot of change between the? Younger generation of now present Baba lovers and the older one, there I feel is <laughs> most of them is more concentrating on the intellectual thoughts of discourses and God speaks. <laughs> but my this thing is where is strictly you more important to Baba's messages and also strictly in confirm it because one of the questions thing is jealous of somebody, positive thinking. The best thing is. Keep think in your mind that Baba put you in this situation. Am I right? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. It's all, yeah. Hey, good. Well, uh, I don't know if we'll do one of these things again, but it's great to see all of you. And I, I usually come, you know, to India in, in October, but it probably won't happen uh, given, given the, the coronavirus. This, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, uh, much love to you all and Jeb thank Bum, you. Jai Baba. Jai Baba. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, you. Jai Baba. Yeah. Yeah. Right. All right. Stay, keep Baba there, he's right there.
Hope he enjoys your company. Yes.